This is an Adobe Photoshop video tutorial on alpha channels. I already made a previous video that can be found at www.theartofretouching.com that goes into great detail about what channels are and how to use them. Rather than going backwards, I'm just going to pick up right where that video left off. So if you haven't watched that one, you may want to scan through it. Now over here I already shown that this is red, this is green, this is blue, and this one together is the RGB all combined. If I click new channel and I just say that it is an alpha channel and go OK, notice that it filled it with black. And when I click the little eye, it's going to show it as red. As I explained before, this is not really red, it's just a color to differentiate it from all the other colors. I can make it any color that I want. So, right now, because this is essentially a fill of a color, of a density, of a tint. Essentially what we've done in this case is we've masked over the image. Now unlike the red, green, and blue, or in the previous video, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, what these channels are doing are masking. So by having a fill of black, which is being represented by red in this case, it's covering over the other colors. So if I was to click on the alpha channel itself with the brush tool selected, right now the color selected is black, I can't paint. When I flip it around to white, I can paint. So in this case, I'm just going to show you that what's showing in red is a mask that's blocking the other colors, in this case red, green, and blue. An alpha channel is nothing more than a mask. Okay, it's not doing anything in the final image. When you save this as a JPEG, that alpha channel will be gone. Alpha channels are nothing more than ways for you to save masks that you took the time to create. If I create a new channel, and I call it child and I show that okay right now it's masking everything if I was to invert that channel with command I when I have the black color selected the channel is showing as white meaning that there is no mask I can then come in here and paint over this area it's not really doing anything on the final output, as I had previously said. That's all you're going to see. But if you took the time to do an intricate mask, whether it be the child or the railing or the city or whatever the case may be, you can save it as an alpha channel. This way, if you need to go back to pull up that mask that you created, it's always left there as a hidden channel. Since an alpha channel is nothing more than a mask, you can select the layer, click that, and then now you've created a selection, which you can then use on an adjustment and simply do whatever correction you want to do. The alpha channel is not doing anything more on this particular layer as it is doing in this channel palette. They're the exact same thing. So, for example, if I hold down the control key and I click on the channel, it created the marching ants. I'm going to deselect that. If I come over to the layer and I do that, it's the exact same thing. So, think about it this way. If you already have created an intricate mask on the image and placed it onto a layer, whether it be an adjustment layer or something else, then you don't need this channel. There was no need to create it. Because let me show you, if I click on this on this mask over here, you can see that the channel palette added a levels one mask in this case. And like I said, a mask is the same thing as an alpha channel. It's only a way for you to save an intricate mask. There really is no other need to add the extra channel unless you're looking to save that mask that you created. So let me put this into a little bit more perspective. If I throw away that layer and I say that I have a mask of just the child 
and I took the time to create a nice intricate mask for him. I can use the brush tool, create another channel. I'm going to invert it. Let's name this one City. And then let's say I take the time to go in here and do that. Now I have a mask of the child and I have a mask of the city. And then let's say I create another alpha channel and then I'm going to invert that. And then we rename it railing. As you can see, all I've really done is created a mask for each and every element within this image. And now I can use this button down here to create a selection from that mask. Now please note that what I have here as the railing, the red in this case, is the mask and it's going to fill everything else. Meaning if I select that layer and I create a selection and then I create a level, then I move the level, I'm modifying everything outside of that mask. So what I actually need to do is invert that and the only reason I had it that way was so I could see what I was doing when I was working on it. So again this one should be inverted and then this one should be inverted. I can then click on the selection tool and create the level and then I can modify what I was working on. Make a selection out of it and then make another adjustment. I hope that I've gotten across the idea that adding extra channels is nothing more than adding extra masks. You should now understand that if you are going to have a layer that already includes mask information then there is no particular reason that you should be adding extra channels. This concludes the second of our four-part series on channels. You can watch the rest of these videos, which include spot channels and the channel mixer at www.theartofretouching.com. Like always, the videos are free to watch, and you only need to come over to the website and sign up for the free membership.